What is up guys, Coach Joe, Garage De La Swole. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a back, primarily training day, vlog, but also talk about the mistakes people make when training back. So, if you guys like following along, make sure you got your pen, paper, jot some notes down, subscribe, like the video, and then use these tips to help you get the biggest, most succulent, jack, juicy back in all of the seven kingdoms. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna talk you guys through what's going on with this training session. I do wanna caveat that I'm a strength sport or strength dominant athlete, okay? So my main premise here is to be strong as possible, look good, feel athletic, and kind of be very well-rounded. So if you're someone who specifically wants to be a bodybuilder or specifically just cares about strength and absolute strength in terms of like powerlifting, this is gonna be the in-between, okay? So that's why this is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna kind of show you guys how I do it and why I do it, uh, just anecdotal evidence based on my journey. But before we get to it, taking my Jocko Fuel pre-workout, this is the Blue Raspberry, which is definitely one of my favorites, and they are at Walmart right now. So if you guys are not going to Walmart for people watching or just anything, because Walmart has absolutely everything there, get yourself some Jocko Fuel pre-workout blue raspberry. I've just been taking it and they're at Walmart, so I figured I'd tell you. So when it comes to warming up, guys, do whatever feels best for you. Just make sure that you are ready to go and you're not overdoing it in the warmup. That's taking away from your actual session or underdoing it, which you can potentially get injury. So I'm starting off with doing some rack pulls using the Mike Bartos PR platform. I really like it. Uh, four rack pulls or doing banded deadlifts or reverse band deadlifts, whatever. It's a great tool. Pretty expensive, but it's worth the coin if you guys buy it. So why am I doing these in a back day? Well, first off, I actually have a tweaked hamstring and I haven't really been doing tons of conventional deadlifts from the floor, but when I do it from a block or rack position, there's really not much pain. It still allows me to pull, uh, but since it's also a double overhand, I can't go crazy balls heavy. So it's not going to further tweak the injury and I can regulate myself where I'm not fried for the rest of my back dominant session. The other reason I like it is because I'm not going crazy heavy, I can keep these sets pretty quick. It's more of a grip stimulus for me because I'm obsessed with grip training. If you haven't checked out my grip series or rice bucket videos or hand comparison videos, check them out up here. Uh, but more importantly, it's warming up my back to a just a nice degree where I'm ready to go right into my main compound lift for back exercises. So if you're somebody that likes to pull uh, and you wanna throw in some block deadlifts or even regular deadlifts, but you don't wanna maximize all your strength and energy in that first variation, go double overhand. You're gonna be limited. I got in my sets pretty much in 12 minutes, just worked my way up, got a good stimulus, a little bit of sweat going, and now I can actually move on to my back dominant first exercise. But with these, just have the bar there, did some more obsessed with the barbell, threw on a plate, and then from there, added a quarter, then a plate, then a quarter, then a plate, then a quarter, and we got all the way up to freaking 455 for a double overhand triple, which is actually a rep PR for me. About a month ago, I hit a single at 455. I don't know if that's the best I've ever pulled with double overhand, because I haven't really focused much on it, uh, but for right now, that was a single PR, and then I actually just hit a freaking triple with 455. So all that grip training I've been doing, uh, as well as just being smart uh, with my hamstring and my back for deadlifts, has been paying off. So very, very pumped about that. And it also allows you to get some strength training in uh, and then kind of segue to the main variation for the first lift, which is going to be Penlay Rose. So we got the Penlay Row. I freaking love these things. I haven't done them in a while, but I built myself up to be able to do these by doing some more explosive, snappier rowing variations, whether it's upright row or single arm dumbbell rows. But one thing you wanna make sure you do is progress these properly because it's gonna be more explosive, right? Your, your joints and your tendons need to be prepared for it. But worked up to 305 for three sets, looking for six to eight reps. And something I really enjoy about these is that explosive snappy nature. So if you're somebody who wants to just hoist some loads, if you're an athlete or even a strong man, typically what I see 
is people training like a bodybuilder and then going to do something in strongman like a sandbag pick or an atlas carry or, or atlas stone carry and they're just not used to gripping it and ripping it and that's something you need to practice so by doing these pen lay rows i can get a great stimulus moving heavy weight being explosive you can see that i'm using kind of the first portion to get the bar off the ground and then i'm violent with that pull now one thing i want to make sure i'm doing is keeping the same technique consistently throughout my sets especially when i'm progressing weight because if we're jumping up in weight and our technique is changing that's not really a true show of increased strength that's just kind of muscle our way around something to make it look like we're lifting heavier weight but the technique is not the same so be careful about that uh, but really happy with these and something to incorporate especially if you're an athlete or a strength sport athlete now the next mistake that i see people making and it's something that's been talked about so much either on my channel or other channels but i still think people are afraid of it is these things right here straps okay don't be afraid to put the strap on or or don't be afraid to use your straps. That's a better way to say it. Uh, but these are great because when you look at your lats, right, we have these just massive wings of dense tissue. Uh, our, our limiting factor is gonna be our hands. Look how small your hands and forearms are compared to your lats. Your lats need a ton of stress to grow. So by throwing these on, it takes the hands out of a limiting factor and I'm able to really move that heavy weight and not worry about my hands or my grip. Now, as you guys know, I'm a big grip fanatic, but what I've noticed is from the last couple months of using minimal straps, which in the beginning it was great, I've gotten stronger with my hands, more endurance, but equally they get fatigued, I get some aches in the elbow, some tendonitis, even if I'm doing rice bucket or whatever. Um, so for this block, what I'm doing is using the straps for most of my pulling, and then I'm doing grip as its own separate session to preserve my grip strength and my elbows and my joints. But this is just another tool to have in your toolbox, guys, that you absolutely want to leverage. And if somebody comes up to you and looks at you and calls you a wimp for using straps, just smile, wave, and then just fart in their face. Okay, that's like the best thing you can do. Just literally turn, show your butt cheeks to them, and then rip a good one. Because I'm six foot two, 260 pounds right now. Peak was about 285. If anyone tells me that I'm a baby for using straps, I'm comfortable with my strength sexuality and my strap sexuality. So uh, yeah, that's a problem for them and they need to go cry and think about it a little bit. Wrapped up the pen lay rows. Now I'm gonna do just some regular lat pull downs. I love lat pull downs. I get a great stimulus from them. Only difference is lately I was using the mag grips or the knockoff Walmart mag grips, which are just as good, so highly recommend them. Uh, but I'm using a regular bar. And reason is because once again, I'm gonna use my straps so that I'm not fatigued by my hands. And when you use those mag grips, it actually does fatigue the hands and grips. So if you're looking for more grip and forearm work, throw the mag grips on. If you're fine with where your grip's at, you wanna target the lats a little bit more and not worry about grip, throw a regular bar on, use some straps. Now with these, typically I was in the 12 to 15 rep range in the past. Now I'm gonna be in that eight to 10 rep range, really increase that weight. And as you can see when I'm doing these, I'm looking for a big stretch up top okay so i almost want to let that weight pull my hands up to the ceiling feel the stretch in the lats once i get that then i'm going to lean back slightly and pull all the way down to kind of like my sternum level so really good range of motion i don't necessarily see it a big problem if you lean back slightly i'm more concerned about having that controlled eccentric with a big stretch and then a violent concentric pull uh, and really just driving those elbows down so push a good amount of weight on these uh, still leaving room in the tank for the next couple weeks to add weight. I would like to get to around four plates plus. This is one of my favorite plate loadable lat pull downs. I've had it for about eight or nine years and it just has not failed me. So just an historical piece of equipment for me that I'll take with me into the grave. It's freaking juicy. Sometimes less is more. And that's going to be one of my other mistakes that people make is you'll find people doing like six to eight exercise for the back, maybe even one time per week, where I am like a less is more, especially right now. I have a very busy schedule. I got about 60 to 70 minutes to train. I need to be focused, locked in and get it done. So I'm picking exercise for the best bang for my buck. And I'm only doing two to three sets to start this block, uh, but I'm pushing them heavy and I'm laser focused and locked in. 
So that's the case where less is more and also increasing the frequency. So I'll do primarily two back sessions per week. I'll change some of the exercises a bit there, but I'm really dedicating two main lifts for the back. And then the other two exercises are primarily going to be some smaller muscle groups like shoulders, rear delts, uh, or like upper back per se. And that's where I'm gonna hit these chest supported rows, uh, but they're slightly different because usually you either have like a neutral grip when you're doing the row or like a bench press style grip where I'm in between both. So it's like a slight angle when I'm pulling back. And since it's chest supported, I'm really letting my arms hang all the way down to the bottom for that deep stretch. And I'm trying to get my elbows driven back as far as I can. And with these, I really feel it in the upper back and the rear delts. So typically, if you're doing a good amount of pulling and you're doing it properly, your rear delts should be growing. You shouldn't have to hit a ton of rear delt accessory work unless that's a really weak muscle group for you. But for me, these are, are enough to smoke those rear delts and I don't do many other rear delt dominant exercises. So be smart with how you structure it, uh, but I'm just gonna do three sets here. These are probably gonna be 10 to 12 reps and hopefully I'll be in that eight to 10 window by the end of this block and I'm gonna be cashing out. So like two failure, but I find with that chest support, it's nice because I don't get to use a ton of body English. It's very isolated and controlled. And with that slight angle in the grip, I can really hit uh, those rear delts and upper back and just get that gnarly pump. So smashing these, uh, I'm using 65s for my sets, which will probably be kind of the peak weight. Um, if I usually do these normally, uh, and I start fresh, I'm at like the 85s or 90s, but since this is kind of midway through or towards the end of the workout, I'm a little bit more fatigued, but I like that because I can really feel the muscle that I'm trying to work and get a good stimulus. So check those out, try them out, see if that slight grip adjustments helps or use a chest support. Um, so you, you're really isolating those muscles and see how it works for you. All right, one other tip when it comes to back training, and typically this is like the bro split ideology is back and buys. Now, very anecdotal for me, I did back and buys, chest tries, shoulders, trap, whatever. That, whatever that split is for a long time, especially when I was first getting into lifting and it did work. However, the older I got, the more I realized my biceps weren't growing and typically I was doing them with my back training. Now, when I really got the best bicep gains ever is when I had my bicep session separate from my back days. And usually what you do is you do your back first and then you hit your biceps at the end. But by the time you hit your biceps at the end, they're already fatigued, they're fried. And you're not gonna get a good stimulus to really cause growth and be super focused on that isolation of the bicep. So I've talked about this in other videos, check out my arm playlist at some point if you want. But I really recommend if you're gonna do back, focus on back or maybe back and shoulders or back and chest. And if you want your arms to grow, do that as its own session. So just straight up hit biceps when you're fresh. Sometimes I've even done it before I do legs because it's completely different than what I'm training that day. But I find when I can keep my back and bicep uh, training separate, I get really good results. And that's also because you're gonna get some bicep gains as the byproduct of training your back. But if you're specifically trying to work on that, make it a primary focus for a separate session or a separate day, then pairing it up with your back. So. We'll continue on with the training session, uh, but that's one of my little pointers and a mistake I see a lot of people making, where if you start doing that now, I find that your biceps are gonna grow a lot better when you separate it. All right, last exercise we got is for the complete shoulder, okay? So this is gonna hit the front, the side, and the rear delts, kind of cash it out. And I got these from Judd Leinhardt, who's just been blowing up on Instagram. Some of this stuff is a little bit complex, and I'm not sure that everybody should be doing it, but I do think there's a time and a place and I do like where he's going with things. Uh, but this is basically using the band with a kettlebell attached to it. I'm gonna almost do like a front raise, then I'm coming out to the side and then I'm lowering it. And that band is nice because it's causing a lot of stability uh, in the shoulders where you have to be controlled. If you're going too fast or too aggressive, it's gonna kind of be bouncing all over the place and you need to be smooth and control with these. And I'm looking to get anywhere from 12 to 14 reps and I worked my way up to a 45 pound kettlebell doing about three sets. 
The other reason I really like these is because while using the band and it's around my wrist, I'm taking out my hands from the equation, once again, limiting fatigue uh, of my grip and using my hands, and it isolates those shoulders completely and hits them at all angles. So I actually do have a torn rotator cuff, uh, and then I have a torn labrum in my other shoulder. I opted not to have surgery on them, and I'm glad that I made that decision because by using different exercises and variations and kind of doing some rehab on my own, my shoulders actually feel great regardless of what the MRI and imaging has said. So if you're somebody who's on the fence and you have some shoulder issues, this may be a great exercise for you to try. At first when I did it, my shoulder felt a little bit weird, uh, but it was one of those things where like 30, 60 minutes after the session, my shoulders actually felt great. Um, and I've been able to sleep a lot better because when you have a shoulder problem, one thing that really affected me was like how I sleep in my position with sleep and it would keep me up throughout the night or I'd have to toss and turn. Uh, but by just figuring out the right variations to use and figuring out what exercises fit best with my shoulders, I've been able to make a good recovery, not have to get surgery, which is always iffy on whether it actually works or not. Uh, but these are fantastic because once again, great stimulus, great pump in the shoulders. I feel it. And, Right after doing those chest supported rows, I'm already pre-fatigued a bit in the rear delts, uh, but this hits, like I said, the front and the side delts. That's just a great way to finish it up. But that's pretty much the session, guys. You know, I got it in within 70 minutes. Uh, obviously I'm videoing, so it's gonna take a little bit longer, but if I'm focused and dialed in, you can do this whole workout within 70 minutes. Keep a good pace, make sure you're rested, but when you're hitting those sets, be focused, dial in, and hit it hard. Uh, but that's pretty much all I have, guys. Like I said, I'm coming up with a new program design. I'm kind of showing you some of the exercise I've been using. I'll talk more about reps, sets, progression, all that down the road, and then I'll put out the template for you guys to try. But this program is designed to be as strong as you possibly can be, look like a bodybuilder, but also feel like an athlete and capable in a lot of different circumstances and just able to hold your own um, with your training. So really been enjoying it. Got a lot of awesome collaborations lined up and projects. So life is good. We got the baby due in like two weeks. So that's just, whew, man, I'm feeling all sorts of things about that, but mainly just absolutely stoked to be a dad. And that's a whole new chapter and journey. But then two weeks in November, we got the pole barn being built. So I'll document that journey and getting all this stuff into a pretty dope 1000 square foot pole barn on the property and all sorts of madness will ensue there. So I just appreciate you guys a ton and sticking with me. And I know these videos are a little bit different. We got some vlog, we got some informational stuff, we got some entertainment things lined up, but I'm a slow burn kind of guy. I'm in it for the long haul. I don't necessarily care how much views we get, but you're gonna know that I'm gonna be around for the long haul, okay? I'm gonna be like the up and coming Dave Tate where I'm just an old washed up meathead who's still getting after it and probably will die under a stack of 45s somehow. But uh, that's it. So if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, check out the programs in the link down below. If you guys want one-on-one -on -one coaching, shoot me over an email. We do a free consult call. And if it's something you're interested in, then we go from there. But I try not to take on a ton of clients. I like to work with the people I want to work with and the people that want to put the work in. Uh, but that's it. So stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.